Hello and welcome to another dbrand Consulting Excel and Power BI webinar series. This is always on the third Thursday of every month from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central African time and it's sponsored by dbrand Consulting. So today we're going to talk about XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP and how it retires VLOOKUP. And I'm also going to give you a methodology for extracting any data from any table in Excel. Very efficiently. Very cool methodology that uses dynamic arrays, uses the spill, you know, the spill uh, trick for dynamic arrays. And basically the modern Excel. How you should use Excel in a modern way. So this is going to be fun. You're welcome and let's push on. So also please join us in our Power BI user groups, Power BI user groups live lab, which we have every third Saturday of the month from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. That's the third Saturday of every month. You check out www.pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. So check that out and join us. We have every third Saturday of the month to talk about Power BI for three good hours. Bring your laptops with Power BI desktop installed. If you have Excel as well, you can bring it. You could use Power BI on Excel, which is really Power Pivot, Power Query, DAX, and M. And you can also move along and follow along with us. So join us any one of those thoughts on Saturdays. We're lucky to be sponsored by Lagos Business School. So that's our latest sponsors. So you could join us there and we'll... Have fun. So I'm David. I'm David Brown. I'm the managing partner of D Brown Consulting, also an international consultant to the World Bank. I'm a Microsoft MVP on data analytics, and I have over 20 years working with Excel, data, reporting, accounting, finance, and I'm also a master trainer. So I do a lot of training. We also check out officetraininghub.com. If you check that out, you see some of our online courses there as well also a chartered accountant and have some other certifications. So that's about me, David Brown. You could follow me on Twitter at dbrownanalyst, at dbrownanalyst, that's my Twitter handle. And I'll see you and continue the conversation online. So what are we doing today? We're talking about XLOOKUP. So let's just jump straight into the demo. So XLOOKUP. So I'll just kind of remind you of what VLOOKUP used to be. So VLOOKUP, we has an exact match. We're trying to get an exact match. So here I want Dangote's EBIT. So this is a table, a typical table, and I want to extract uh, Dangote here, the EBIT, which is this value. So in our typical VLOOKUP, we just do equals to VLOOKUP tab. And VLOOKUP says, hey, what are you looking for? So that's the lookup value. That's Dangote. I put a comma. Then table, the table you're looking up. So the entire table. Yeah, looking up the entire table, put another comma. Then what column are you looking up? Well, the column I'm looking up is the column that has EBIT. So that's, uh, where is EBIT? EBIT is here. So that's one, two, three, four. So usually we type four. That's bad practice, I know. But anyway, let's move on. And then is it is it an approximate match? You see the default of VLOOKUP is approximate match. Well, I really need an exact match. So that's one of the differences you're going to see. And then I close my bracket and I enter and I get to my 108. So how do you do with index? Index, if you type index, index and I tab, you see index has two versions. Index has array, row number, column number. Then you have reference, row number, column number, area number. We're using the first version of array, of index. So the first thing the index says is, hey, show me the entire table you want to work with. So this is the entire table. Then the next thing it asks for is, what is the row number of what you're looking for? Row number. How do I get that? Well, if you see Dan Gote, let's count. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. So that's eight. So obviously typing eight and counting doesn't really make sense, right? That's where match comes in. We could use match to do that, but let's 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 move along. So so Dan Gote is on the eighth row. And what about the columns? I put a comma. It says, what is the column number? So that is EBIT. Which column is EBIT? One, two, three, four. So my table has five columns and EBIT is number four. So I put four. I close my bracket and I enter. And yep, I got it with index. What about XLOOKUP? So XLOOKUP. Let's have a look at XLOOKUP. So XLOOKUP, look at the syntax here. The syntax is lookup value, lookup array, return array, match mode, search mode. So that's XLOOKUP. Lookup value, 
lookup array, return array, match mode, search mode. Let me give you a shortcut to understand how to use XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is what are you looking for? Where exactly are you looking for it? So what are you looking for is lookup value. Where are you looking for it is lookup array. So where, which was the column that you're looking for this thing from, right? Then return array is, okay, so which column contains what you want to return, right? And then match mode is, okay, are you looking for an exact match or not? Or what exactly are you looking for? And search mode, that one is special. We're going to see that later, right? So lookup value, this dangote, right? Put a comma. Where am I looking for it? Well, I'm looking for it in this first column here. So I can highlight the entire column. Let's say this, yep. So that's where I'm looking for it, right? Now, of course, if it was each lookup, it would be horizontal. And the X lookup works whether H or, or vertical or horizontal, it works fine. So it replaces H lookup as well. So this is the lookup array, yeah? Then if I put a comma, where, uh, what's the return array? What are you trying to return? I'm trying to return something in EBIT, the EBIT. So I'm going to highlight the EBIT column, and that's it. And then if I put a comma, you see match type. Exact match is the default match. So it, unlike VLOOKUP, exact match wasn't the default type. In XLOOKUP, exact match is the default type. If I put a comma, these are the wildcards. Oh, not wildcards, really. These are the search. This is the search criteria, which is here you have search first, last. We'll see that very soon. So really, I don't need, since, since the default is exact match, I really don't need to specify anything. I can just stop right there and enter, and I get my value. So that's a simple way of using XLOOKUP. Let's, that's the exact match way. Let's look at approximate match. Let's say approximate match. How would you use VLOOKUP to get approximate match? So let's look at that now. So approximate match, you have sales amount of 17,500. And I have a sales table here. So this is my sales table. And if this is my sales table, we have, we need to, anybody that sells between zero and 10,000, has a rating of 0%. Well, you sold between 0 and 10,000. We should try harder. No bonus, no vacation for you. You sell between 10,000 and 15,000. You get a 1% uh, commission. And you can go on vacation in Abuja. You have 15,000 and 25,000, 1.5% and oil. So what is 17.5? 17.5 is somewhere in here. So 17.5 is in between this somehow. And then you get a 1.5. So if you want to do a range lookup in whether VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP, if you want to do a range lookup, you need to modify your table a little bit. You need to put the lower end of your range here. So I'm going to put the lower end of my range, 1,001 and 15,001, and uh, the lower end. So I'm just typing the lower end of my range here. So this is 25,001 and 40,001 and then 60,001. So those are the lower ends of my range. Then I can do my VLOOKUP. So the normal VLOOKUP, let's see VLOOKUP tab. So lookup value, again, this is the amount, the lookup value. Then we have a comma. Then your table array. Table array, what's the table array? Well, this is the table I'm looking up from, this table. Then I put a comma. Then the next thing is column index num. What index, what's the column number you're trying to pull out from? So this first second, third. So it's the third column, three. Then if you look at the comma, the next thing is range lookup. And the range lookup has two options. Approximate match is the default. So since approximate match is the default, and that's what I need, an approximate match, I don't need to put anything. I just close my bracket, enter, and I get 1.5. So this is the old way. This is the VLOOKUP, old way of doing it. So the new way, if I do equals to X lookup, X lookup, X lookup again, lookup value, comma, what is the lookup array? Now, the lookup value, this 17.5, we're looking for it in this single array, this array, right? Comma, what is the return array? Well, this is what I want to return. So I just highlight. Now, if I put a comma, you'll see that exact match is the default. But right now, I don't want an exact match. What I want is the next smaller item, or is it the next larger item? Or is it just a wildcard? I'm looking for a wildcard character, right? So you see, I have more options. It's not just exact match and and, and uh, approximate match. Is the approximate match we're saying? Are we moving from smaller to higher? So is it exact match next smaller item? So obviously, seventeen five is not here. The next smallest item to seventeen five is fifteen thousand and one. 
which is what VLOOKUP does. But this is such a clearer definition, right? So that's really what I want. So I have to specify that. Now, I don't need to specify search, search mode or I, I can leave that out, right? So I close my bracket and that is how I use XLOOKUP. Now, one big difference between XLOOKUP and doing approximate match is that VLOOKUP used, does something called binary matching. Binary matching, which means it needs to go one at a time, and this list must be sorted from ascending to descending, or, or sorted ascending, right? So it needs to be sorted. So if I mess up this list sorting, XLOOKUP will break. So let's test that. I'm going to sort by this column. Let's see data up here, and A to Z. Guess what? Look at XLOOKUP. Now it's getting the wrong percentage, but... And that's VLOOKUP, sorry. VLOOKUP is getting the wrong percentage, but XLOOKUP hasn't budged, but XLOOKUP is getting the correct percentage. Whether your list is sorted or not, XLOOKUP will find the correct approximate match. That's cool. That's just super, right? So that's XLOOKUP with approximate match, far better than VLOOKUP, for sure. Let's look at a last match. So what about if I want to get a last match? So I want to find... What do I mean by last match? Well, if you look at this, I have some months, I have some products, and then I have the sales for those products in that month. And typically when you grow tables, it's usually the very last data maybe the, has what you're looking for. So here I have data and you can see, okay, this June is the last data and I'm looking for, actually I want the last sales for Milo. So I have 554. 554 is the last sales for Milo. What was the first sales? First sales is 268. When it comes to lookup, you, you usually just get only the first item. So I may use the old way to get the first sale. The first sale for Milo is 268. So I use my typical VLOOKUP. We say VLOOKUP, what is our lookup value we're looking for? Milo, comma, where are we looking for it? Well, it's this table here, right? So I have to highlight. I can't highlight from here. I have to highlight from here. Yeah, because the first column must contain what you're looking for for VLOOKUP to work. So if I highlight this table all the way up there, yeah, and then I do a comma, and what I want to return is the second column and comma zero because I need an exact match, right? So I close my bracket. Now zero or false, right? Zero or false is the same thing. Zero and false actually work. Same thing, right? Zero and false. Right. So when I enter... It finds 268, and what I need to do, since I'm going to drag this down to the right, I'm going to drag it down, I need to lock. So I'm going to lock this up. So a small trick is to click on this to highlight, and I do a 4 to lock. I'm locking that up, yep, because I need to drag all the way down. Right. So last sale. What I want, I don't want the first sale. I want the last sale of Milo. You can't really do that if you look up. You just, just can't do that. So I need to pick this up. I need to pick this guy up. How do I pick that up? really can't work. So let's use XLOOKUP. So XLOOKUP first sale. Let's find the first sale for XLOOKUP. So the first sale, bring this up. So the first sale will be equal to XLOOKUP, same as VLOOKUP. I'm looking for this guy, comma. Where am I looking for it? The lookup array, that means I'm going to look for it at this list from the top to bottom. I should lock. I'm going to lock it up. So I'm pressing F4 to lock it up, top to bottom. Then I put a comma. Then the next thing is the return array. Return array, that is from here all the way to the end. I lock that up as well. So I just pressed an F4 key, right? So I'm back up here. So this is the formula, right? That's my formula. Let's move this out of the way so you can have a look. So this is the formula. I lock, close my bracket. So this is X lookup. Looking at this in a lookup array in the return array. When we enter, we get the same 268. Come to the end, we double click, and there we have it, all the way down. But XLOOKUP can do also, it can do a last lookup, uh, basically looking at the last match. So lookup again, XLOOKUP, exactly the same thing. Just take this down a bit. So it's exactly the same thing. It's looking at that. Where is it looking for it? It's looking for it in this product list from top to bottom, right? I can lock it as well. I'm going to press my F4, put a comma. Then where is it looking? That is your lookup array. My return array is all the way here from this all the way down to the end. That's my return array. That's what I want to return. F4 to lock again. If you look at the formula again, that's it. Then I close my bracket. So here we're looking up this. We're looking it up in this 
list which has all the values and then I want to return this list or this array something from there so if I enter you get what it is which is first match isn't it but that's not what we want we don't want first match if we put a comma you see the exact match are we looking for an exact match or we're trying to match the next smaller item or the next larger item well we're looking for an exact match so it's exact match yeah in fact I can even ignore it since it's since it's the default I can ignore it you can just put the next comma now this is where the magic is this search first to last first to last is usually the way we do it I mean you're searching from the top to bottom right what about if I do last to first if I do last to first and I close my bracket what I've just told VLOOKUP not VLOOKUP XLOOKUP to do is find the last one 554 if you look down here you'll see that Milo is 554 Maggie is 666 and then Nescafe is 355 so if I come down here and drag this down so if I come here and drag this down double click you see it finds the last sale so this is the first sale this is the last sale and then you can do kind of a growth formula and, and stuff like that you can't do that with um, VLOOKUP that's not possible let me show you a even more modern way to do what I just did there so I'm going to try and replicate this all just using three formulas so regardless of how long this list let's say I just need a list a product list now in your new Excel, your new Excel, which is an Office 365, you need to have Office 365 and you need to have updated the latest Office 365, you'll have what we call dynamic arrays, which is really the new Excel calculation engine. So if I say equals to unique, if you don't have this function, that means you don't have this unique you don't have dynamic arrays on your system, you haven't set it up, it doesn't update it. So unique, what does unique do? Unique is so cool. Unique is a new dynamic array. If I come and highlight all my products, and what I want is a unique list from those products. So look at it. I'm just highlighting all the products and closing my bracket. And then I just enter and guess what happens? It just spills a unique list for me. Just spills it. Excellent. Now, I mean, you could even go in. So this is formula in a cell. If I come here and type maybe something to obstruct, guess what happens? It says, hey, I can't spill my answer. Yeah, yeah, disturbing me. And I can't delete any one of these because really it's just a spill. Look, I'm trying to delete it. It can't go. The only thing I can do is delete the first one and then everything goes, right? Let me undo that. And then I could actually come into the beginning of this formula and say, hey, I'm going to sort you. I need this list sorted. So I'm going to do sort. I say sort, which is another dynamic array function. And I enter. And that's it, sort. But the thing about these arrays is that every function is an array function. Every formula now in Excel is an array formula. So let me explain that with XLOOKUP. So if I do an XLOOKUP, right, and in the XLOOKUP, I say, hey, what's the lookup value? This is the lookup value. But really, when I, I don't just want to look this up. I want to look everything up and I want you to spill. So if you see lookup value and I want to look up all the values and allow it to spill, what you do when you click on this, because you know this was a dynamic array, is you put a hash key at the end. Just a hash. Just put hash. Just look at that. So put in hash. See what it did? It just spilled, right? Kind of highlighted everything, knowing fully well that this is a dynamic array function or formula in there. So if I put a comma and the lookup array is just like the same thing, lookup array, I'm going to highlight this, guys. Highlight all the way down, right? You can lock it, press F4. So that's my lookup array, yeah? Then I put a comma and then my return array, return array, come in here, lock this, right, F4. Right, so that's F4, I lock it. Now if you look at the formula, everything, you're looking this up. In fact, this up I'm going to lock. I just want to lock the column so that I can take it to the right. I'm locking the column and, and I'm looking this up, which is everything here, in this list of products and I'm returning the sales. So if I come to the end and I close my bracket, when I enter, it's going to spill. It spills all the answers, everything in one, right? It spills everything. So water, I have water there. You can see water is 534, water is 534. So I can copy this formula, which is in a single cell, and paste it here. It's going to spill the same thing. But the difference is if I come to the middle of the formula here, I delete this, I put a comma. It says, hey, do you want an exact match? I want the next smaller or the next larger item. Well, I, I want an exact match, so I'm just going to ignore that. That's the default. 
Then I don't want first to last. I want last to first. So I want you to look up last to first. So I'm going to put a tab. That's a minus one. I close my bracket and I enter. And now it's looking at the latest sales. This is the last sale. This is the first sale, last sale, later sales. So that's exactly like this one I had up here. But only difference is this is now sorted. So if I take this sort, I could copy. If I could copy this formula here, this sort formula, uh, I could come in here and do a sort as well. Yeah, If I click on this and delete this, and I come here and say equals to sort the unique list. So sort, sort the unique list list of my products right i highlight all my products close my bracket and enter look at that so sort the unique list and now it's sorted now you can see that the, exactly the same thing the only difference is i didn't make this dynamic so i, I kind of had to drag it down but this one the whole thing is written in three cells if i delete these three cells everything goes right if i delete that everything goes so this is modern this is really modern dynamic arrays using dynamic dynamic formulas and functions and XLOOKUP all working wonderfully together. Right. So next, what are we going to do? The next thing and the last thing we're going to do is build a dynamic lookup table. We're going to build a dynamic lookup table, pull out a whole mini table from a big table, from a big table of data. We're going to pull out a subset of this table automatically using XLOOKUP. I'm going to use XLOOKUP and some interesting tricks and techniques for you to automatically pull out a smaller table from a larger table. So we'll see that coming next. Great. So we're now at the last stage of our webinar where we talked about various aspects of how you use XLOOKUP. But the last stage is we're going to build a dynamic lookup table. What I mean by a dynamic lookup table is a, like a mini table looking up a major table. So usually when we have a big table of data, our reports are really a small version of that big table. So I want to give you a very cool dynamic way of building that out using XLOOKUP and dynamic arrays. But before we do that, let me recap what we've gone through with this XLOOKUP function, which is the new VLOOKUP replacement. In fact, it's the new VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, INDEX, and MATCH replacement, right? There's also XMATCH, by the way, which kind of does something that XLOOKUP does. So XLOOKUP already has XMATCH in it, but I'll explain what I mean. Great. So the first thing we did is the simple exact match, right? So we checked and saw, okay, what is the exact match? What do we mean by exact match? So that's what index and VLOOKUP does, right? So index will look at the table and say, hey, I need to get Dangote's EBIT, right? So where is Dangote's EBIT in this table? If I look at the table, you can see Dangote down here. And where's the EBIT? EBIT is right here. So there's 108.9 and that's how we got this. Index says, hey, give me the entire table and tell me the exact row to go to and the exact column to go to. That's how index works. Exact table. Which row? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, let's say 7. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Can count. Okay. 8. And then 4 is the column. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's how index works. Nice. Index is pretty good. VLOOKUP. You look up value is Dangote. The lookup array or table lookup or table index looks at the table after you look up. Uh, look up value you say okay which table am i looking for this thing from and the table is the entire table and say so in this table which column should i go to and that's four so one two three four column four and then false is you have to put false there because the default uh, the default match type is that it doesn't look for an exact match it looks for an approximate match which is one of the flaws of vlookup because most people want an exact match x lookup very similar the syntax is your lookup value. What are we looking up? up? Dangote. Where are we looking for it? Well, you give it an array, the lookup array. So this is the where I should look up Dangote from, just this, this column. Then you now give it a return array. So the return array is what it should return, the column where the data contains, the column that contains the data that you want to return. So that's how XLOOKUP works. Yeah, just looks at your Lookup value, 
lookup array, return array. Very simple. There's also match mode and search mode. So that's a simple use of X lookup. So approximate match. Here we're saying, okay, this guy got sales of 17,005. What commission should he get? If you look at this table, not arranged in any particular order, we saw that, well, 17,500 is between 15,000 and 25,000. So he's due to get 1.5%. XLOOKUP gets that correct, but VLOOKUP doesn't. Because VLOOKUP requires that this table be sorted in ascending order, right? So if I click here and I come to data and I sort in ascending order A to Z, then VLOOKUP works. But XLOOKUP doesn't care. It will always get you the right value. So that's XLOOKUP far better than VLOOKUP when it comes to approximate match. And how does XLOOKUP do that magic? Well, after you do your normal XLOOKUP that I just showed you, you now put a comma and then it says, okay, exact match, or you want exact match or next smaller item, exact match or next larger item or wildcard match. Well, we still want an exact match, so I'll leave the defaults there. But then, yeah, so we want an exact match, but actually it's the next smaller item we want. Yeah, so to say, it's the next smaller item. So we don't need the last argument yet. So it's the exact match and the like next smaller item. You close your bracket and enter, and that's how you get it. Right? Super. So the next thing we also looked at is last match. Last match, what do we mean by last match? So sometimes most people have data, you have data on products, and your data keeps growing. So the last data you have is really the latest data. This is the latest sales data, for example. This is the most, the oldest sales data and the latest sales data. So if you want to find out how you've grown between January to June, well, it's good to get the data for January and then get the data for June and see your growth rate, right? So in VLOOKUP, you can only get the first sale. You can't get the last sale. VLOOKUP always gets the first item. XLOOKUP can get the first item as well as the last item. So what's the magic that it does to get the last item? Well, after your normal X lookup, we put a comma. Yes, you require an exact match. Then another comma, and this is now the search mode, right? So you're basically saying, hey, am I searching for the first to last? Am I searching for the last to first, right? First to last is what VLOOKUP does by default. Last to first is the looking at the last item, last item. So you're looking at the last occurrence of that item or that product. Now, binary search does the same thing, sort ascending, sort descending, but this is how VLOOKUP works. So this is the old way VLOOKUP works, but we don't need that, as in what we need uh, and the way match works, but this, what we need is that search from last to first, right? Tab, I get minus one there and I close it and that's the code and that's what works, right? So we also looked at, after looking at the last match, we also kind of looked at a really cool way of doing this, which is using dynamic arrays. So using dynamic arrays, this entire thing we just did, we can do it by using dynamic arrays. And in dynamic arrays, you could just say, hey, um, let me just delete that. If I delete this, you know that it's just three formulas we wrote here and everything spilled. How was that possible? Well, look at the formula. This is the formula. is a new formula. Sort, we're sorting a unique list of our products. Sorting a unique list of our products. It's a new formula, new function for only people with dynamic arrays. If you have the latest version of Office 365, you should have these functions. It was released recently. XLOOKUP, well, most people will not have XLOOKUP, but it's also is available. It's going to be available very soon to everybody. So once I get a unique list, if I type something here, you see it can spill. There's an error. It's trying to spill its answer. Then what about here? So here we're doing the same XLOOKUP, but we now have this magical hash key. This hash key tells us that, hey, this cell that contains our lookup value contains a dynamic array. So it's instead, if you look at this, if I delete this hash, you see all it's looking at is just Maggie. But if I want to look at all at the same time so it can spill, I just need to put the hash. But if I leave it like this and enter, it won't spill. If I want it to spill, I come here and put a hash. Of course, I only put a hash if this already had a dynamic array. So I put my hash key there and then I enter and it spills. Same thing here. This one just looks at the last sale using that minus one as our search mode. So that is XLOOKUP. 
absolutely wonderful. So we're going to use the more advanced version of XLOOKUP. Another advanced version of XLOOKUP where we have a dynamic lookup. We're trying to build a mini table from a major table. Let's see that next. So a dynamic table. Now I'm going to show you a methodology for how you build this table, right? So we're going to build out a mini table, right? And this mini table is going to have dynamic headings. So we can change the headings to anything we want and the table gets the information for us. We could change maybe the key value. Let's even put something here. Let's say we want a company name. We want the name of the company we're analyzing, yeah? Company name, we have company names here. We pick them dynamically as well. And then we put headings here and the headings can change at any time and our data should update. And all this, we're going to use XLOOKUP to do it, just XLOOKUP. And let's see how that works. So let's have a look at our data. So this is our data. This is our data with all the headings. These are This is data, comparable data on food and confectionery companies in emerging markets. We got that from sources Damodaran, Damodaran's website. Go Google Damodaran, you see most people that work as financial modelers or valuation experts, we you would know Damodaran, yeah? So Stern Business School. Uh, so if you check the headings, we have all these metrics, all these metrics for companies, total equity, revenue, EBIT, EBITDA, um, to beta, all these data for various companies, right? How many companies do we have here? Let's see. We have about 260 companies, right? So what we intend to do is pull a mini table out of this major table. And how do we do that? Well, to do that, we, we're going to use probably short names. So we want to pull any, any name we pick from a list in this short name and any column we pick in our table, we'll just pull out the data. How can we accomplish that? So... If I come to the company, I want to have a list of companies. That's the first thing. So to get a list of companies, I'm going to use data validation. But I want to do it efficiently. I want to do it in a way that we can. this table can grow and everything works perfectly, right? So what we could do is we come down here and we get a company list, a list of all the company names, right? And we put it in a single formula. How do we do that? Well, there is in the new... Excel calculation engine, we can do equals to unique. There's a new function called unique. And what does unique want? It just wants an array. We can ignore this other two for now by column and of course one. So let's leave that. We just want an array. What's the array we want? Well, the array we want will be the list of companies in our data. But before we pull up the list of companies, if you really want to work efficiently, what I advise is this. You need to name your data. There are three very important names you need to give to your data, right? The very first name is you the headings. So the headings of your data, you give it a name. The key column, the column that contains your unique identifier that you want to use to pull out information, you also give it a name. We're going to call this one probably K, right? So in fact, I can call that now. I'm going to pick from the very first name here, short name, the first name, on the list, highlight, control, shift, down arrow key. I come to my name box at the top left here and I call that K. I just call it K. K for key column, right? K. You could call it K underscore something. Then I highlight the headings from serial number, control, shift all the way to the right. And I'm going to call this headings H, right? H and I enter. Then the entire table, that's the entire table starting from the very first transaction here. I highlight the whole thing, control, shift, right and control, shift, down arrow key. There's the whole table. I'm going to call it D and enter. So do this first, then you will really maximize the use of uh, X lookup because now you have references to the entire table. D, you have H and you have K, right? So every single table you have mentioned. So you could say, for example, this is D underscore metric, H underscore metric, and K underscore metric. And then another table can be D underscore sales, H underscore sales, and K underscore sales. So you get what I mean. I'm just using simple DKH here, DHK, right? Great. So once defined, we don't really need this table anymore. We're going back to the dynamic lookup. And now you'll see how I can use that DKH definitions of our table to fully build this wonderful dynamic array table. Now we have companies. I want a list of companies. See how easy it's going to be. Company list, I come here and say, I need a unique list of companies, unique K. 
All I need is a unique K. Unique K, what do I mean by unique K? Well, K was the column that contained our key identifier, which is companies, right? So if I say unique K, it spills a unique list of companies. This is the spill. It has spilled out all the company names. If I highlight this and you check down here, you see count is 260. All the 260 companies all listed here. Let's go a step further. Just to make life easier for us to pick a company, let's say we're going to sort it. So we're going to put a sort. So sort is another array function. When I sort and enter, it has sorted the entire thing. Remember, this is spill. So everything is written in a single cell. If I type in here and enter, you see it can spill. It's a new error type. Yeah. So if I delete this, it spills. While we're at it, let's also create an, a unique list of headings, right? A unique list of headings. So let's say unique unique headings. You remember we called headings H. We named our headings H in the table. So if I say unique H, you see, oops, it's spilling to the right. Obviously, because our headings are to the right, right? But that's not what I want. I don't want this. All I want is for it to spill down. So I need to do something else. I need to say transpose another function, transpose my spill, right? Transpose my unique list. And I just enter and it transposes it all the way down. Let's even go a step further and let's sort it as well so that we can have a nicely sorted list. So let's say sort. So I sort my transpose of my unique headings and I close my bracket at the end and enter. Now it's sorted. So all my headings are now listed and sorted fully. And of course, if I update my table, it will update here. Now that I have my company list and headings, I can now build my dynamic array. So that is how you create sorts. You just create a, a dynamic list using the unique function and the sort function. Super. Now to implement my table, I can highlight these four cells, come to data. Now I'm going to put a data validation. So it's under data tools. So the data validation is going to be a list validation. And what list should I use here? Obviously, in the old Excel, I would have to do this. I'll come here, highlight like this. That's old school. Old school. Don't do that. All I need to do is select the cell, the single cell where I knew I had a dynamic array. So I had a dynamic array there. And I just put a hash. See this hash? This is the magic hash. Once you click on the cell that you know you typed a dynamic array into a dynamic array formula, once you put the hash, what you're telling it is, hey, spill. I want you to use the spill. So click OK. And what happens if you come here? Now I have a data validation that has the entire list. Let's pick some companies. Yeah. So let's pick uh, various companies. Let's see. Uh, let's go down, pick some more companies. Pick this, pick company. Yep. Uh, another company. So I'm just picking companies at random. Uh, let's pick the last company. Hmm. Let's see, Sam Young, interesting companies. Let's see, who else? Uh, I don't know any of these companies. Mind we pick one. So that's it. So now I need to populate this with information, right? So what we want to do is I'm going to also do a data validation at the top here. So data validation, we have a data. So we have data. I'll come to my data validation. Then I'm also needing a list, but this time my list, obviously the source of my list is what? It's going to be my headings and the source of my list is here. So I click on the first cell, which I know has my dynamic array and I put my hash key. So put the hash key and I say, okay. And when I say, okay, and I come back down, you will see that now we have data validations. And what are the data validations containing? A list. So I'll put a Bloombox symbol here on the Bloombox symbol. And then I want uh, maybe, let's see, beta, maybe not beta, let's see, what do we want? We want uh, EBIT, I want to see, what else do I want to see? Let's see, oh, like beta is always good. Let's see, uh, which metric? EV to beta, that's nice. Or EV, let's say EV to sales, right? EV to sales. Then I want to see what else, scroll down, FF, free cash flow to the firm, free cash flow to equity, and let's see free cash flow to the firm. Anything, any more interesting data? So you can see how easy it is to just pick things. Let's say the return on equity, right? Return on equity, that's good. Great. So now that I have my table all set up and all very nice and dynamic, how do we populate it automatically pulling data from the data set? So we'll see that next. How do we pull out data from the data set using XLOOKUP?
Right, so I'll write my X lookup. So X lookup, I'm going to pull out data from the data set. So X lookup. So what's X lookup? The lookup value. Well, this is the lookup value. Now watch this syntax very well because this is a wonderful syntax that will just work for you every day. It's super. And it used to be much more difficult to do what we're about to do. So X lookup, you're looking this up. We need to lock the column, right? Because we're going to drag it right. I do a comma lookup array where are we looking this up obviously you should know that it's in k you know we defined k didn't we so it's going to look up in k let me just bring this down a bit so you see that so it's looking looking lookup array is k because we defined it as the key column of our table we said we need to define three things in our table the d which is the entire table uh, the entire table excluding the headings then the headings themselves and then k the key column yeah so k is there comma now the next thing after comma is return array return array what's the return array hmm, interesting so we have this and then what is our return array the return array well is saying that look this up in k then return bloomberg symbol unfortunately we need to highlight bloomberg symbol we need to, to highlight the bloomberg symbol column in the major table so it's something like this we need to come to this major table and highlight this right i need to highlight this and if i highlight that and i close my bracket i'll be able to get it but really that's not what we want if i enter guess what i do get it i get it right but it's not dynamic i can't drag this right it's not going to work so it's just not going to give me the right value so what do we do we need make it dynamic how do we do that well we delete this and we need to bring in the services of xlookup again so we do another X lookup, right? Tab. So X lookup, another X lookup to give us the dynamic list. So you remember the first X lookup was looking up the company name in K. Now this X lookup is going to look up this Bloomberg symbol, F4, 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 until we lock the row. And guess where we're looking it up? Obviously, you know, it's H. We're looking for it in H, right? The headings, right? And once you look for it in the headings, what we want it to return after looking for it in the heading. So your lookup value, you have your lookup value here, you have your H, which is the lookup array, and then your return array is actually the entire D. D is the whole table. So D is the whole table. Since we said we're going to H, right? So to look up this H, to get this, know the exact column H is in, and then give us the entire H column, right? And then if I close the close this x look up and close this x look up and enter i get my bloomberg symbol now if i copy this all the way down i get everything for other companies i copy this all the way for this entire thing i get exactly what i need to get i can format it this way and then now i can do i mean this is just wonderful isn't it look at it everything got i mean i can come here and change this to a bit there so you see it's a bit there I now see it's exactly the same as picking up a bit there, right? I can change this to EV to sales, EV to sales. So now I've built a dynamic array. I've built a dynamic table, a complete table extractor. It just extracts information from a table, a mini table. I can change my company, all super. Come here and do my other metric. I can say I want the average of this let me just lock um, f4 f4 lock the row close that i can drag this all the way down and come here and make this the median so the median of it the median right and then i can make this the max which is the highest and uh, i can now make this one the min right which is the lowest and I just drag all these metrics to the right. And there you have it. I have my dynamic lookup table using dynamic arrays at the bottom. I have a list of dynamic array lists using my dynamic array sort and unique. I have my key, key identifier and I have my headings all nicely listed. And then I use them in my data validation to give me a dynamic list. I use the headings in my data validations. I used H in my data validations. And now I have my Bloomberg symbol. 
can just align that left and I can just pick everything up using this formula which I can just copy and paste all through right copy and paste that all through and it works just works perfectly so that is the new and wonderful lookup formulas in Excel and this is your new kid on the block which is your X lookup X lookup pretty super yep right Thank you for watching another webinar from D Brown Consulting. And this is our monthly webinar on Power BI and Excel. And you can always reach us at Power BI PBI user group, PBI user group dot com slash Lagos. So I can give you that here. So try and register. Register and join us. That is PBI user group dot com slash lagos for our live lab we do live labs every third saturday of the month 9 a.m to 12 noon and we do most of it we have sponsors for venue our latest sponsors are lagos business school and we have the webinars live labs on live labs not just webinars live labs every third saturday of the month the webinars are every third thursday of the month every third thursday uh, third thursday of the month from 9 a.m to 10 a.m every third thursday of the month Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next month.